Hey everyone, I'm Russ Carson, and welcome back to 81 Crow. Now today I have something very, very dear to my heart and special to me that I want to share with you guys. And it's a project that started 17 years ago with my father, Glenn Carson, and our friend, Reed Martin. Now dad had a job site around the Washington DC area, which was conveniently located close by to Reed's house in Cabin John. Now Reed is one of the best banjo players that you most likely have never heard of. And he absolutely blew the roof off the old time banjo playing community when he released this project. This is a monument and a complete triumph of, of old time music. He and Don Anderson sat down in, in his living room and over the span of seven hours recorded 60 tunes. Now for the actual project they whittled that down to 37. But the CD is unbelievable. The booklet that comes with it is 20 pages. It contains the history of the songs, who he learned them from, their tunings, everything. It's unreal. But Though 17 years ago, he and dad started talking and they wanted to figure out how they could get me to learn old time banjo playing in addition to playing Scrugg style. So the solution that they came up with was dad stopping by Reed's house two times, the end of 2002 and the beginning of 2003, sitting down in the same living room where the project was recorded and having Reed break down his style of old time banjo playing and also playing through a numerous amount of the tunes on the project. I've been working hard to digitize this stuff and I want to share with you now a sample from one of those sessions. And it's a great example for you to see how Reed's mind works. We're going to take a simple song like Red Wing and we're going to Martinize it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here's Red Wing. I guess one of the tunes I learned on the streets of Bloomington when I was a kid was Red Wing. And that's a big fun one to play around with because you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, uh, Red Wing started out as. spaces that could use like and then you can do a hammer on involving the third and fourth string so it goes like this
<laughs> every time you think you know every note and every tune, you just open the door and there's Dan Gillard or Ken Perlman or Howie Burson or Billy Fair. There's so many great banjo players. Rick Lee, I can name them forever. There's just uh, so many wonderful banjo players and they all have musical brains that are different. And it just never ceases to amaze me. And I was thinking the other day, yesterday morning I woke up and I was thinking about a guy named Chris Cool who lives in Toronto, Canada, who's another great up and coming. He's there. He's already, he's a great banjo player. He's a great banjo player right yeah. now. Yeah. But I, I knew him when he was hungry and you know, taking care of handing people sheets and stuff at Augusta Folk Festival so he could have a chance to be around musicians. He was probably yeah. Yeah. sixteen. And he's just like <laughs> and now he's working on his third C D of old time banjo of oh. tunes he's made up and and uh, it just makes me very happy to think that I was in his shoes years ago, sitting at Kyle Creed's feet on <laughs> And then, you know, just by sheer coincidence, there's generation after generation. There are a couple of people that come along who are just very, very, you know, they, they, they just, it's who they are. Somehow, somehow it makes their life complete to have a banjo and thump around and fiddle or a banjo or a guitar. I don't play anything but banjo, so I only can relate this to banjo people, but it's been a great pleasure to see Scott Prouty and, and Chris Cool slowly taking over the generation behind me of, you know, the next generation of musicians. There are some great musicians, and Jeremy Stevens, and so many people are, it's a real privilege to meet them and watch them grow and hope and pray that they have great lives.